Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined right now by Dr. William Henry McComb, a prominent Beverly Hills surgeon who's known as an internal artist. He turns ordinary internal organs into works of art. Dr. McComb, welcome to the show. Um, what form does your art take? Well, it depends mainly on the patient and their artistic instincts. For instance, some wealthy geriatrics have commissioned me to airbrush their discolored internal organs. We naturally we use acrylic paint because uh -huh. it's quicker drying than an oil paint. And I have been commissioned by heads of state. Uh, Can you give us a name? Or? Oh, uh, uh, Ferdinand Marcus, a classic example of the Philippines. Uh, in his case, I removed a certain number of organs we took out a portion of the liver, we took out one kidney, he after all had another one, and we took out also one lung, and uh, we placed in a small track lighting system. Wonderful. And this gave a, a, an orange aura to the thoracic area and a pinkish glow to the liver and the, the spleen. Sort of a neo-impressionist oh, style. Uh, yes, neo-impressionistic. Uh, incidentally, we discovered also, and this was most interesting, that he had gallstones. So I was able to delight his wife because I took these little gallstones, I put them in pairs with a little bit of ribbon, and I sculpted them as shoes. That's she was very, very pleased wonderful. with that. Now, wh when did you discover your flair for internal artistry? Uh, I suppose really the the first time was when I realized that Van Gogh had cut off an ear. I thought, well, that's external artistry yeah. in a way, but unfortunately it spoiled the symmetry of the face, and he was quite lopsided with that. And he also smoked a pipe on that side, and he tended to fall over, uh -huh. which looked so bad in, in bars and everything. But then, as, as a student, when I was doing zoology, uh, I looked, I was dissecting fetal pigs, and I looked at uh, the color and the right. symmetry, and I thought this is, I, I felt rather as Leonardo da Vinci, and indeed probably Michelangelo must have felt at the same time, when they look at the internal organs, because uh, there is symmetry about, there, some internal organs are very grotesque right now. Uh, the pancreas is an example of an extremely homely, very, very homely organ. But the whole unit has a sense of order and a sense of harmony, and, and that, uh, that I find very I had that same experience in my own biology <coughs> class mm -hmm. when I dissected uh, a frog. All right? it's, mm. it's grotesque at first, but as a whole, there's a certain poetry about it. Now tell me, uh, it sounds like you were meant from the start to be a painter. How did you get wrapped up going into medicine? Well, I suppose really, uh, although basically I had an interest in art, uh, it was family pressure. You see, my grandmother at one time was engaged to Joseph Lister. Oh, you, oh yeah, Lister, uh, Listerine, the, uh, the mouthwash. Oh, yes, yes. A pioneer of antiseptic surgery. I'm glad you heard of him because he realized that bad breath possibly caused a lot of the sepsis during operations. Huh. Uh, they had masks, surgical masks, but they were very constricting. In fact, they were so constricting, they very frequently the surgeon uh, wasn't able to breathe uh -huh. after a while and they would just fall and the assistant would have to continue with the operation. Uh -huh. And then uh, my grandfather, uh, well actually my, I should tell you that that thing with my uh, grandmother with Lister, that fell apart. He discovered that the family had shares in scope and that was very uh -huh. unfortunate. But then my grandfather, who she actually married, was a uh, a Civil War surgeon. Remarkable. Uh, he specialized in amputations. He was on the side of uh, Robert E. Lee, a wonderful man who eventually, I understand, made paddle boats and did remarkably well with it. Hmm. Well, my grandfather wore, as indeed did Abraham Lincoln, a stovepipe hat. And in running onto the battlefield to do the amputations, naturally it, it would uh, occasionally fall off, so he'd jam it down over his crown. And the enemy used to love to shoot his hat because they thought it was quite humorful mm. that he chased it to try and retrieve his hat, and, and this led to certain humor. But one time a cannoneer in General Meade's side, I think it was, and he fired a shot. Now, the shot, the cannonball was losing its velocity as indeed it approached the top hat. So it penetrated into the top hat, but it didn't emerge the other side. Now, the effect was quite interesting because at the time, grandfather was running downhill. So with the sudden weight of the cannonball mm -hmm. up top, he lost his balance and did a series of quite amazing cartwheels right across the front line of attack. 
And uh, this has created great humor and merriment among the soldiers. Well, visually, it must, it must have been a stunning sight. Oh, it was very relaxed. It relaxed all the tension. It was. Tell really me about your, your, your father's background and some of his uh, medicine. Well, he, he was a, a straight surgeon who, as time went on, decided that sutures were not for him. And he used human hair. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, his human hair was very greasy. In those days, the hair went down to the head and shoulders. Right. And it was greasy because they, they didn't have head and, head and shoulders. Mm. And he also uh, decided that cat gut, because he was a cat lover, was probably best left in the cat. He had a cat called Ben, and I remember Ben produce kittens and uh, he was rather surprised at that but a very alert gentleman he changed the name of Ben to Ben Hur uh, and he figured the cat gut is best left in the cat however he then experimented with Elmer's glue plain old Elmer's glue huh. and uh, he used that in, instead of using the sutures but unfortunately became addicted that's addicted very sad sniffing with Elmer's glue it was quite frightening well now despite your your family's uh, your artistic leanings all right you wound up becoming a doctor. Uh, now, when did you make the big transition from being, forgive me for saying this, a run-of-the-mill surgeon to being an internal artist, okay? What was your moment of epiphany? I think my interest was really awakened by a very famous rock star, whose name obviously I can't mention, who commissioned me to put an earring into his diaphragm. And we took Polaroids of that and he showed them around his friends and they were very impressed. Well then he called me before he did a tour in Alaska and he said, did I have any further ideas? And I said, it strikes me that Alaska is going to be very cold. And he said, yes, I'm not looking forward to it. Now he wore his hair in a ponytail. Hmm. So I said, why don't we cut a little hole at the nape of the neck and run the ponytail down the spinal cord, mm -hmm. which of course is in the vertebra, and then that will keep the whole spinal cord warm because oh, yeah. everything emanates around from the, sure. the spinal cord. And uh, that worked out very well, but I'd totally forgotten that obviously the ponytail was going to grow while he was on the tour. Yeah and it, it, it emerged at the other end of the spine oh. and um, I don't wish to be indelicate but oh. when it did it, it it looked almost like a tail but he capitalized on that because when he came back here and worked the palladium he cut a hole at the back of his trousers and brought the tail out and uh, that caused a certain amount of interest uh, he, he neighed and, and whinnied the lyrics which I thought was very very clever method of adapting to the thing uh -huh. and uh, finally got into the top ten now in his his case we did an amazing thing uh, we didn't actually uh, sew up the wound uh, what we did was we spackled over it and we painted over it uh, this was an idea which my father had had before my father unfortunately at one time decided to uh, wallpaper he wallpapered over a wound uh, he used a sort of greenish wallpaper and uh, the man's wife was very deserving. The man was quite happy, but whenever the man undressed to go to bed, the wife realized that the wallpaper uh, impacted rather badly and clashed mm -hmm. with the, the drapes and, mm -hmm. and clashed with the coverlet. It didn't clash with her money, thank God, but she was very right. upset about that. So people that. have found out, people uh, in Beverly Hills, they discovered through word of mouth about your techniques. All right, so you got a lot of moneyed people who came to you, I'd imagine, right? And well, I took a lot of photographs, uh -huh. and I showed them around the local art world, uh, the people within our little, yeah. uh, and as a Beverly Hills resident, naturally the word uh, traveled around very, very quickly. It spreads mm. fast. Now, many people thought that cosmetic surgery by then was old hat. Sure. They'd had their noses lifted, their yeah. ears lifted, their chins lifted, the fat removed under yeah. the eyes. They had all that done. And I discovered they would spend a, quite an amazing amount of money and indeed go through a certain amount of pain and suffering just to feel special inside. Uh -huh. 